The great majority of the membership of the Thule Society joined the Nazi party established in 1920. The founder of the party was an individual charged with monitoring meetings as an army spy, Adolf Hitler. Yet the Thule meetings, which he first began attending as a visitor, made a deep impression on him. Pagan mythology and the theory of the master race had an immediate effect on Hitler and came to form his world view. As a result, he founded the Nazi party from a branch of the Thule society. Important members of the Thule society assumed key positions in the party. Rudolf Hess, Dietrich Eckhart, Alfred Rosenberg, and Adolf Hitler. The darkness that would enshroud the whole world was slowly growing. The Nazi party was founded with the regrowth of the superstitious beliefs of pagan religions. In the years which followed, the party's mystic research would be directed by Heinrich Himmler. Himmler literally inhabited a fantasy world. He so believed in the legend of Atlantis that in 1939 he sent German researchers to Tibet and Peru. The German scientists were charged with finding traces of Atlantis. Wherever they went, the Germans measured and recorded skull sizes, lengths of the hands and feet, and the eye and skin colors of the local people. This practice would soon be implemented in all those European countries which fell under the Nazis heel. The foundations of catastrophe had been laid. As the second most important figure in the Nazi party, Heinrich Himmler directed the project of resurrecting pagan German culture in person. He believed that he had been reincarnated and that in his previous life he had been King Heinrich I. Heinrich I was the legendary king who had saved the German tribes from the threat from the east. Quedlinburg Cathedral which housed the king's tomb was declared a sacred site by the Nazis. Strange rituals were performed every year on the day regarded as the king's birthday. Himmler claimed that he had seen the king in a dream and that he had shown him the way in his difficult task. The ritual was ended at the stroke of midnight when Himmler attempted to rejoin his so-called former soul by having himself locked in the black dungeons underneath the cathedral. This was the sickly mentality which ran the Nazi party, which came to be strong enough to alter the course of German and world history. As the Nazis gained in strength, the efforts to return to pre-Christian pagan German culture were stepped up. Pagan temples were established in many parts of Germany and made training areas for officers. 
Aryan ideology and mysticism formed the basis of that training. Ceremonies were held in the accompaniment of traditional Germanic battle horns, and the soldiers sought to protect themselves from evil spirits by lighting giant fires. The brainwashed Nazis lost all touch with reality and believed in such nonsense as that spirits thousands of years old would emerge from the flames. Similar perverted rituals, displays and brainwashing methods would continue throughout the course of the Nazi regime. One interesting example of fascism's efforts to brainwash society were the book-burning ceremonies. The first of these took place on May 10, 1933. Brainwashed German university students gathered in Berlin and other major German cities to burn books whose ideas they disapproved of. Thousands of books were burned to the accompaniment of Nazi salutes, songs, and military music. The fascist state permitted only its own ideology to be taught. Outside of that, nobody must be allowed to think anything else, or else he would be punished, have his books burned, or be silenced in the harshest way possible.